We are now into November and trying to get our wood all piled into the basement and uh, I figured you guys deserve to learn everything that we've learned about wood over the last couple years and, and getting it into Cole is uh, splitting wood down there. And uh, so this is going to be everything you need to know, at least the basics of firewood and getting started burning a wood stove. When I started with a wood stove, I lived in a camper. I had this little, actually it was a camp stove that came from Princess Auto and I just kind of plugged it in, plumbed it in and didn't really know what I was doing. And used pallets, heat treated pallets, not pressure treated pallets. And I used pallets to burn. I stopped at these department stores and, and burned them just because I preferred wood heat. And because even now we live in a tiny house, a little cabin, that uh, I prefer wood heat. It's a lot drier than using something like propane or baseboard or whatever. So I like having the wood to be able to dry things out, whether it's our mittens that get wet in the wintertime, our boots. It just feels good to be able to stoke the fire. You're not worried about the power going out and you have that kind of control. And so we did that and for the last couple of years we have been ordering our wood already split and this year we bought a splitter, which in hindsight having a newborn baby and trying to split wood is kind of a nightmare, which we're learning right now. Nicole's not very happy about it, are you darling? We're not learning it, I told you not to do this. And you did it. Yeah, I like to I like to bite off more than I can chew. But we're getting her done regardless, getting her exercise. So uh, let's talk about the differences between things like splitting malls and uh, splitters. And then we'll get into talking about different types of wood as well. We'll see if it actually splits this one. I've been having difficulty. <laughs> Ben probably told you a nice story about how he started out with wood stoves, um, but really the whole story is he decided to get rounds this year, which I said, we probably shouldn't do that because we have a new baby and that's too much. And then I looked at the window and we got rounds and it seems like this year is going that way because I also told him that 200 chickens was too many, but he got 200 chickens instead of 30 and then he realized that 200 was a lot. So. Moral of the story, he should listen to me more. And now we're gonna freeze this winter. Okay, don't listen to her, she's crazy. Um, the reason we got rounds of wood is because it was cheaper to go this way because the price of wood has gone up and up and up by hundreds of dollars over the last couple years. I've been watching it and I was like, you know what? It's cheaper for me to buy a log splitter and split the wood myself than it is to uh, buy it already split. So we don't use that much wood, so I figured we could do it ourselves, but it's kind of been a little annoying, and I will show you why here. It's a little five ton that we got from Canadian Tire, and it's okay, like it does the job, like you're seeing Nicole can split some of it, but we've also got some of these big boys that it really doesn't like to split. And so it's nice being able to control how much or how big your sizes are. And I, I like nice little chonky um, pieces and having more pieces per um, log. But when it comes to trying to split some of these, like some of these ones are 18 inches or bigger. Um, that's a bad example, but like we've got some massive logs here. And so it makes it difficult to be able to split those because a five ton log splitter just simply will not. Problem with this guy is that it's only a five ton wood splitter. And obviously we need something more because we're still having issues, see, with splitting it. Um, I've got a pile there of stuff that it won't split. So if we wanna keep getting rounds every year, we're gonna need a new wood splitter. So anyone wanna buy a wood splitter? The, uh, the baby doesn't like when I stop moving, so apparently we have to keep moving if we're gonna do the stocky segment. So, yeah, we don't have a big enough log splitter, and uh, like Nicole said, it's kind of a pain when you're trying to get some of the bigger logs to actually get them to split because they just won't. It just doesn't have the hydraulic power, um, and I wish I had known that, but I mean, it was on sale, it was relatively cheap. Um, so we bought it, use it, and uh, 
it's doing the job for a lot of it, but there's just some I'll have to break out the chainsaw and be able to knock them back a little smaller before we're able to use them and put them in the stove. When it comes to the size of firewood, firewood is usually or generally cut about 16 inches, give or take. It depends on what machines are being used or who is cutting it. Um, if you're cutting it by chainsaw, you kinda, some people will do it by eye, 16 to 18 inches. I think our wood stove can hold um, an 18 inch log. And uh, so it's, it's rule of thumb about 16 inches. And I know there's different ways to kind of gauge that. But you'll see a lot of these are pretty much the same width. Some of them are a little long, but I'll just buck those with my chainsaw. It's not a huge deal. But if you are completely new to um, firewood, wood is classified into kind of two different categories. And it's your softwood and your hardwood. And when I used to burn uh, pallets, pallets are generally softwood, um, unless you get a really heavy one, but most of the time they're built cheap. They're built of uh, spruce pine fir, SPF, spruce pine or fir, which are very soft woods, which will burn very fast and very hot, but won't really sustain you overnight. So you need um, heavier woods, hard woods, which are more like your maples, um, and different types of, basically a good rule of thumb is evergreen trees are um, softwoods and hardwoods have leaves on them, ish. I mean, poplars and birch and, okay, there's a lot of exceptions to that rule, but regardless, you want hardwood to go in your stove to sustain you for uh, a very cool winter night. Even in a tiny house like this, it, it takes, uh, we'll lose heat when it's minus 40 outside and, and dealing with that is not fun. Since I'm kind of taking a break to film and I'm, the baby was kind of fussy, I'll show you what we got going on inside here and we'll talk about um, axes and hatchets a little bit. Okay. I know that cardboard is too close. We're not using the stove yet. Um, that cardboard is way too close. We're gonna move that over here, but it's kind of, we've been storing up cardboard um, all summer to be able to burn it. It's great for, oh, it's great for fire starter. So we have all this cardboard to be able to start fires with and then we're stacking wood here. We'll burn, with not a lot, we'll tend to burn anywhere between two and three cords of wood every season. Depends on how cold it gets or how warm it stays. And we're just working on getting it in here and stacked really nicely. I have a nice little uh, splitting, if I can pick it up, splitting hatchet inside to be able to split kindling with. Just something light, small, not a big deal to be able to kind of wield here in the basement. And then I've got a couple other malls that were fortunately given to me by some friends, fans, followers. Um, and so I've been sharpening those and learning how to sharpen, which is another thing you really should do. Um, learn how to sharpen knives or sharpen hatchets and whatnot. So we'll talk about some axes and some malls as well. I don't, I don't know where Nicole has gone. She has left. Nicole is gone. She's no longer splitting wood. Okay, I've got a little, I got a little file here that I've been using to kind of just rough sharpen some of these. Um, some of these were old axes that are really dried out from the previous owner of our place and uh, snapped the heads off. There's one I think over there sticking in that that I've snapped off and so I've been having a rough go until I post it on uh, posted on Facebook that we were looking for a mall and we had a few people offer up some so I wanted to test out a few different ones. We got this bad boy, which I'm not sure what kind of handle this is. Plexi, fiberglass maybe. Um, it is a five pound, I believe, which is pretty nice. The ducks are freaking out. <clears throat> What's wrong with the ducks? Sorry, we lost uh, Sawyer for a second. We had to go find him. And while I get distracted because of the old ADHD, I was thinking about, um, we need to talk about fall and winter garden prep. So if you want to see a video about that, let me know um, in the comments because we've been doing a few things and trying to get things ready. It's clearly not ready. We still got stuff. I was kind of scared there. We had a snow day. We got some snow, but we're doing okay now. We still have time to kind of get things in. So uh, we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, I'm gathering up the malls and stuff here and hatchets and I wanna show you the difference. I can't really swing them with the baby on my back, but at least I can show you the difference of them and sort of what they're good for. A nice um, ax, not really great for splitting. It can, it can do the job. Um, better for kindling or softwoods. Um, whereas your mall or even our, our wood splitter that Nicole is using is a lot better for um, for doing that for the for the splitting, mainly because of the weight and the width, because it's hard, to, really hard to get an axe to do um, what you need it to do without the width. And a good example is this guy right here. This is a five pound splitting maul. And you can see that it's flared out right there. 
That way when it lodges into a piece of wood, it'll really spread it apart. Um, and it's weighty, so you don't have to swing as hard when you're coming down to try to, uh, oh, wood, wood's coming in. There's a log rolling. <laughs> you don't have to swing as hard when you were trying to, uh, trying to split wood apart. But still, I mean, a five-ton wood splitter is gonna do a lot more than these little spaghetti arms are, right? So Nicole is a lot, it's gonna be a lot better at this than I am. This will be an example of how it won't split. Probably. Sometimes you get surprised though. Depends on how dry it is and yeah. a lot of different factors. Satisfying every time it pops. <laughs> this one could be splitting quite a few. 